Welcome back, and today we've got this really old, dirty bit of wood that I found outside, and this is really gouged, damaged, it's thick with dirt and mud. So I'm going to scrape away some of that mud and sand away so anything that's sharp, because I think it's going to make a perfect body for a lap steel. So as I say, I'm not going to try and sand away too much, I want some of that rough grain, I want some of that dirty image of it, because a lap steel, to me, resonates well with country music and something that looks like a fence post with wires attached is the perfect country instrument in my opinion. So I'm just going to sand gently. Um, you do want to be careful with treated timber, you don't want to be treating yourself so make sure you do it well ventilated and you're not breathing in that dust. So yeah I'm just sanding the sides and I'm also going to hand sand the corners. I just want this to be nice to touch uh, but still have that rustic look to it. And I think this is kind of polishing up quite nice. I'm going to use a mitre saw to kind of square off the ends and cut it to the length I want. And this is going to be a real simple project. I'm going to use the tools available to me, but you don't, if you don't have a mitre saw, if you don't have other tools available, I'm sure you can do it with much simpler hand tools. I'm going to make the body 80 centimeters long because I think that's going to be perfect for a 22 inch length scale lap steel. And once more, we'll just cut it on the mitre saw. I've seen a few different designs that use the neck portion recessed, but I'm going to try and do an angle like a guitar. And I think this will give me a nice angle of the strings over the nut so that they shouldn't bounce over and they should sustain well. So I'm using my bandsaw, but it's easily to, you could do this with a chisel or with just a handsaw if you're going to take your time. And then on the back of the guitar, I'm going to cut the same, so it should form a nice shape, similar to a guitar. I did make a little bit of a mistake here where I've kind of cut it a little bit too thin, but that's not an issue. So once more, we're going to sand off those cuts. I want this to look really natural. I want the curves to kind of blend together. I want it to look like a fence post that's always meant to be a lap steel. So on the headstock, I'm going to cut on some angles so that the tuning pegs taper inwards so that the tuning peg should be pulling the strings reasonably straight so there's not too much angle over the nut. It's like sideways, pulling it away from the, the, the recess that the string needs to sit in. So once more, a little bit of sanding, but this is starting to take shape. I think this is starting to sure what the finished product could look like. So next up we need to kind of create space for some pickups. I'm going to use the mitre saw again and slide it along to create a recess for the pickups. So I'm going to use a humbucker as these are going to create very little noise and I think it'll just look cool. It'll also drive quite well. So from another project, I've got some aluminium L channel left over. So I'm going to use that to form what the nut and the bridge will look like. So I've laid it out here and I think that should work pretty well. And one of the only things I've really bought for this project were the tuning pegs. So they're just going to go on the neck like this. I've marked out where they need to go. Though I just need to drill some holes. I'm just going to go slow with this. I don't want to tear out the wood and also I don't want to make any mistakes. I think a wonky tuning peg probably will show up right quite badly. So once our loads are drilled, I'm going to build it up and I will disassemble this and paint this, but for now I'm just going to build it up and make sure that everything fits, make sure everything kind of works together well. So my goal with this was not to use any 3D printing, but I do break that rule a little bit as once it kind of get, comes together, there's a few little details that I think would work well. So we'll come to that in a bit. I'm going to use this beveling tool to kind of deburr any edges. Also where the strings come through the bridge, I just want to make it a little easier on them. I don't want to be putting any stress or any load on them that I don't have to. So it just eases that corner. I've also beveled where the screws go through here, so that should give it a bit more contact, but also means that the screws will sit flush and it should look a lot nicer. So as I say, I'm going to screw it all together, build it up, see what it looks like. But yeah, lap steels, I think they're quite an interesting 
instrument that kind of create like a futuristic metallic sound and in some ways it is like an electric piano that when you first hear it you go what is that and it's interesting that lap seals have kind of so heavily used in one genre of country music and it rarely seems to expand beyond that but one area where I really do like lap steels and pedal steel guitars is in scoring music uh, films. You create some really interesting, like abstract, like atmospheres. When you create those like metallic notes bending together, it's so cool. So in an attempt to get maximum sustain, I'm going to drill right through the body and I'm going to feed the strings through the body. This can be hand drilled, you can use a pillar drill I'm just showing you can do it here with a hand drill. I've also drilled it here at an angle so that all the wiring can go through the body and be hidden away. I probably didn't need this many screws for the neck, but oh well, more screws are better. The wood is a little bit rough in places, but as I kind of varnish it and sand it, it's going to get a lot nicer. But also at the same time, I don't want to overdo it. As I say, I want this to look a little bit rustic, a little bit like a fence post. You can see the, the wood is cupped so it hasn't fully sanded the middle of the board and I don't mind that. It adds a lot of character. So this is starting to look good. We need to add a, a jack plate. This is just off a Stratocaster type guitar but we've inverted it. And then we added a small recess on the inside just so that there's enough space for a jack to go in. But I think this is almost it. We just need to strip this down and add a little bit of varnish to kind of protect it and to make it look a little nicer. So initially I went with like a light oak colour, but it seemed to go like a green colour, which it looks a lot nicer on the camera. It looked definitely more green in real life, in my opinion. So we did a few coats of this and then I went for a darker colour. But yeah, at this point, it's one of the hardest points for me anyways, where you know you've got the instrument pretty much ready and you just want to hear it, you want to play it. But you really need to take your time and putting on a layer of varnish and leaving it, you know, four or six hours and then coming back for more is, is difficult, but it, it, it's definitely worth it. It's definitely getting darker. It's looking more brown now. I'm definitely enjoying these colours a lot better. I'm enjoying the scarring that's in the wood and it's still showing through the varnish, which is what I wanted to achieve. So I'm going to start building this up and I've added an extra hole here just so we can earth the strings. So we've got a little cable there and then all the strings are going to touch the, the bridge so that all the strings will be grounded. I've added some 3D printed tabs either side the pickups and this just kind of neatens up the pickup area. And I've also added some recessed nuts through the, the body so that strings can't be pulled into the wood because if those strings pull through there'll be no way of getting them out. And as I say, I did make the neck a little bit too thin. So to compensate for that, I've added some 3D printed washers on the tuning pegs. And then on the neck, I've just filed away enough material so that the strings will sit in there and without bouncing out. So the last piece of the puzzle is this tone bar. And this is just a heavy bit of chrome steel that allows us to slide up and down, changing the length of the string. <laughs> 